Hey guys, welcome back to another Mythic Legions review. We have Juno the Crusher from the Advent of Decay series up for review today. On the side we have a small picture of Juno along with the short bit of lore. And on the back we have the new 2.0 artwork with a few paragraphs on the lore of Mythic Legions. Let's get her out. Mythic Legions come in collector friendly packaging. They are easy to remove out of the box without having to rip anything apart. Juno and her family were once part of Atlas' band of warriors, the House of the Noble Bear. They roamed the wastelands of Mythos, purging it of all the evils that are poisoning the lands. When Juno's parents died in battle with Scapular the Cryptbreaker and his warband, Juno blamed Atlas. Although Atlas tried to look after Juno after her parents' death, she left the army in search of a new start. While being nearly defeated in battle with the horde of skeleton soldiers, she was saved from death by Gorgo Aetherblade. She then had found her new home for her hatred and anger in the Legion of Arthir. Let's check out some details. The first thing we notice is Juno's bright blue tattoos covering her eyes and the side of her head. She has long flowing red hair along with large braids on the back. On the side we can see more of her tattoo design along with more of her braids with a few pieces of jewelry on her hair. On the other side of her hair we can see long flowing strands of red hair. A lot of detail was sculpted into the small strands of hair. On her chest we can see that she only wears a metal bra. We have a small bit of body tone sculpted into this area also. On the back we can see the rest of the bra armor straps. Two of the peg holes in the back will be covered up later on with shoulder armor. Juno has bare shoulders with just the slightest hint of muscles in the sculpting. Juno has a mixed pair of gauntlets. She has steel spiked armor on one hand and a leather wrist guard with a few gems in the center on the other arm. On the front we have a large black leather belt with a big silver buckle. A brown fur is attached to the belt and sculpted to have a furry texture. We have a bit of muscle tone on the thighs, but other than that nothing of interest here. Her armored legs have a nice shade of silver, almost looking brand new. We have a few straps of black leather in the back with golden buckles. And to finish off the figure we have small brown leather shoes that are textured with tons of small cracks. Let's check out the articulation. We have a ball jointed head, arms that open and rotate, elbow that bends and rotates, a rotating forearm, hands that bend up and down and rotate, a ball jointed chest, waist that rotates, legs that open, bend forward and back, thighs that rotate, knees that bend back and rotate, feet that bend up and down, rotate at the ankle and toes. Let's see what she comes with. We get a small pair of shoulder armor. To install the shoulder armor, removing the head will make it easier. You can then simply match the peg with the correct socket on the back. The hair will get in the way of the armor's articulation. We have a two-handed hammer with a nice rusted out look. One of the hammer head does detach but we don't get the claw head to replace it with. We get a small one-handed axe in dark silver with the wooden handle. And we get a standard one-handed short sword. We get a pair of wing adapters to use if you wanted to attach wings to this figure. And we get a small version of the brown belt that fits 2.0 bodies. Juno the Crusher is a good attempt at a barbarian female type of figure. She doesn't have the muscle or the mass you would expect from a warrior but that's a personal preference. Her head sculpt is by far the most interesting feature of the figure and I feel they should have expanded those blue tattoos onto her body. The lack of armor and cloth like a cape or a fur from being included really would have made the character shine a bit more. Accessory wise, she's a bit light on the amount of accessories. And as her name implies Juno the Crusher, she could have came with a few more blunt weapons, especially some of the cooler 2.0 maces. A cape or some fur definitely would have filled out this character out a bit more. She just feels a bit light compared to some of the other figures that were released in Advent of Decay. Juno the Crusher definitely has a unique barbarian female look and that's not really common in action figures but she has a lot of competition in this wave especially with the other female figures. Her head sculpt is definitely the best part of this figure and I recommend getting her if you want to increase the amount of female warriors in your army but you're not missing out on much if you decide to skip on her. Alright guys that wraps up this review, more reviews are coming up soon so stay tuned.